interviewing Tiny Violin, the fifth horseman on Classic WoW. He already made history. He did. He's made history. 7-11, the day the earth stood still. The day that 30... Oh, it was. Six very brave hardcore champions were killed in what can only be called an act of hardcore terrorism. <laughs> Chat, today we have the opportunity to sit down with one of Classic WoW's biggest villains. The man that recently wiped an entire 40-man hardcore raid roster, <laughs> Tiny Violin. First off, Mr. Tiny Violin, thank you for making uh -huh. the time for this interview. We've been trying to set this up for a couple days. I know you've got a very busy work schedule. How was your day at work today? Uh, it, it was good. Um, before we start, though, I'd like to give you a, a brief introduction for those people out there who don't know me. Okay. Please. Okay. Here we go. So, in classic... Yeah, I w yeah. this one was an inside job, too, by the way. I was wronged out of Scarab Lord and ATS. Wait, 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 what? So, in classic, I was wronged out of Scarab Lord and ATS. There it is. That's right. I then created 16 accounts. So, this is the villain backstory. For opposite faction PvP. Dispelling buffs is an intended mm -hmm. blizzard mechanic. In no, it's not. Kevin Jordan literally didn't even know that the buffs were dispellable. He literally said it wasn't. The world buffs, he, he, he said they weren't, but oh, that's fine. It's fine. But I just, just to clarify. I saw him, I then played with a blizzard employee named Wolfjob, so he confirmed I was a driving factor in Chrono Boon. So anyone who likes Chrono Boon has me to thank for it. After Classic, I kept playing Vanilla since it's my favorite expansion, private mm -hmm. servers, Seasons of Mastery, and uh, eventually I found Hardcore. Yeah, got... he wasn't dispelling. It wasn't about the buffs. It was about sending a message. To 60 and Hardcore, and I played with HE Elite for about a year. I made friends with a lot of people in the guild, and I was one of the reasons they got so far. <clears throat> Without me, locks weren't putting up curses. There was no fairy fire. There was wow. no IEA. Some warriors. How the fuck do these people not know how to play the game? It's a one-button game. Weren't even sundering. Warriors were. What the fuck is going? How are these people, bro? I don't even feel bad anymore. How do you fuck this up? After every raid, I did a log review and I helped warriors and mages with the rotation. I mean, what the mages rotation? didn't even know how ignite mechanics even worked. And uh, after raids, I played Scriblio with them. I made a lot of friends in the guild. Uh huh. But uh, eventually, I began to see some corruption within the guild. So the rules at the start were... Oh, fuck. So the guild was corrupt? Much, much more strict. You couldn't use non-hardcore tunes for help. For example, you can't use a non-hardcore priest for mind control for sun buff. Some of my friends got... He's talking about the sun buff is the, uh, the war chief's blessing. Booted early on for this exact reason. <clears throat> But once AQ next came into the question, more and more people showed up with Ren buff, but they actually refused to explain how they got it. So I actually learned. So he thinks that because and also like Tiny Violin, remember, his specialty is world buffs. That's like his area. You, you know, like whenever they bring in, you know, there's like a TLC documentary about something like some pizzeria in New York. And they bring in like a, a like a fat guy with a mustache, and his he's like his his title is cheese like a you know 1700s cheese expert. Well, this guy here is classic World of Warcraft world buffs expert. So he would know more than anybody else. A lot of them had actually died, and they just altered their add-ons to keep playing. The rules were different for different people. <laughs> So I brought up the Bren buff issue in Discord, and the response from leadership was hardcore server soon. On top of this, the loot was well, I mean, realistically, they can't... Like, you can't micromanage what people do outside of raid time, and y you can only control, like, you... What, what, if, what are they going to say? What are they going to do if somebody... Okay, somebody got the Rend blackhand buff. Like, what, what... Like, how can you actually... How can you, like, realistically arbitrate this? I mean, very corrupt. There's leaked audio of Loot Council just stating, you know, I want these items and taking it. The same players who didn't even understand Ignite... There's leaked audio? Okay, where is it? But, okay. ...panics were in charge of this Loot Council. So, tension in H Elite was getting high, people were unhappy. I would call out bad players <clears> in Discord, <throat> and people would praise me, others would hate me. It became polarizing. Man. 
we used to have a rule back in the old days that every single night that I would raid lead, someone would quit the guild. It was like a quota. Uh, eventually, I realized the true spirit of vanilla hardcore was lost, and we weren't doing an official hardcore run. None of this right. would have been possible on an actual hardcore server, That's true. since majority of the guild had actually cheated. Mm -hmm. I started warning my friends that Judgment Day was near, and I was looking to put... That's smart. Judgment Day. ...the stop to what I thought was fake hardcore. Yeah. I actually that messaged makes sense. all my friends and told them beforehand right. there would be an incident in tonight's snacks. So... And and uh, I actually do have proof of people that were warned. Maybe they didn't believe me, but I can show you off stream some screenshots. So did he tell him, like, don't come to school today? Is that pretty much what he said? <laughs> oh my god. After the, after the wipe, a lot of people were relieved. I got some thank you and I got some death threats. But the corruption didn't... Said they were relieved. That's the best part about it. Finally, we've been released from this torment. Stop there. After a lot of the HD characters died, they yeah. started entering BGs. They actually died again since the game was over for them. But then Dell had a change of heart and decided to go back into KT. So these people actually told them that they went into BGs and died, but he just brushed it off and just said he wanted to go back into Max. Like, okay. this was my problem with the situation. It was truly never hardcore. It was a fake accomplishment the entire time. Well, of course it is, because it's not an accomplishment to begin with, but okay, sure. I mean, that's my perspective on this shit, bro. This game's a joke. It's a one-button game with one-button bosses. Who cares? But, all right. <clears throat> Okay, let's unpackage all of that. We're going to do that over the course of this interview. Thank you for showing up once again. Uh -huh. um, over the last two or three days, I've seen people dismiss your behavior as your, de your depressed, hate-filled, basement-dwelling psychopath. Would you say any of that is true as a starter question? Oh, not at all. I'm like the happiest person ever. Um, I would be too if I was him. Bro, like I saw his channel today. He had 600 viewers. Bro, like, you run an ad at 600 viewers, you make money. You match, like, over $100. Right. I was never happier in my life than whenever I was griefing people. The one thing that could always bring me joy was somebody else's lack of it. Well, I understand this very well. I, I just, I, I love playing Vanilla WoW, and I have a blast doing it. Okay. Um, I've also seen people calling you the Osama Bin Laden of hardcore community. And that you're a oh, hard... that makes sense because, like, you know, the Seven Eleven thing. Poor terrorist. No, Nine Eleven. Uh, yeah. what, what's your response to that? I don't think so. Like, I mean, he's basically Osama bin Laden. Yeah, I think that you know it's kind of the same thing, right? I mean, it's it's got to be kind of close, right? It's this is kind of like <laughs> it's basically, yeah. I was really helpful with community, like. Um, like, like I mentioned earlier, like I would help them with like log reviews. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was just, I was really helpful with the community. I don't know why they would call me a terrorist. Okay. Um, as I've said, I don't think he's like a terrorist. So I think he's like a farmer, right? Or like a livestock farmer where like you raise cattle up and you slaughter them. That's what it really, that's what it's so, really like. This was not an accident. You were memeing a little bit. You were joking around when you made the comments about being in the wrong corner. This was intentional, yeah? So, like, <laughs> even though this, so this is clearly not a brief, <laughs> but the problem is, is everyone would try to mass report me. So in my best interest, I had to pretend it was the wrong corner, but judgment day was coming. And I talked to a few people I trusted the most, and I had to play it off as a raid accident. But at the end of the day, this was Judgment Day. So it wasn't really a grief. And this is actually a very good point that he brings up. He wasn't really griefing them. It was just simply Judgment Day. So, I mean, is that griefing? Well, no. I mean, judges are in real life. Are they griefing people? No. So it's, it, there are two different things. It's a good point. Okay, so just to be clear, considering it was Judgment Day, this was not an accident. Judgment uh, Day was premeditated. 
Well, it's it's not griefing. It was just simply, like I said, Judgment Day. Yeah. Well, that makes All sense. Right, yeah, grief, griefing. That right, because would... it's just like, because griefing, how is, how is, I mean, is God griefing on Judgment Day? No. No, that's like, that's, that's, that's what he does. Word has got a lot of nuance to it. I'm not sure how to define it. I'm sure. I'm sure the word griefing is terminologically in the eye of the beholder. Um, but prior to this raid, you knew that you were going to do this. Uh, so it's. I, I like to give you an analogy. So, like, <laughs> you know, like killing a killer. Is it? Is it really a bad thing if you kill another killer? Man, that's a deep one. Yeah, now we're talking the ethics of death sentence. Um, you said you said that other people oh, that, knew yeah. in this rant. That's a very good fucking point. That's it. An eye for an eye, brother. Is it? Yep. There it is. Because it's again, it's not griefing. It was just judgment day. It was like kind of, it was something that just needed to happen. It doesn't really matter who did it. It matters that it happened. Aid that Judgment Day was going to happen. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, like, like I said, I can I can show you screenshots off stream. Uh, I warned <clears throat> my friends in the raid that I, I don't know if they if they believed me or. A small violin play the sad song, in the hall from Nax Ramos. Horseman massacre, wrong corner. Every man's dead. Never return to life. Stone drink cannot save you. Careful from the yellow light. Not, but uh, they were warned beforehand. Okay, and so the people that were warned, were these people that you were friends with or that had been kind to you? Or did you, how, how did these people figure out yeah, that Yeah, I told them not to go to happen? school that day. Yeah. Uh, they were just like, um, they were, they were good players. We had a kind of a similar mindset, you know, we wanted to min-max our characters, you know, we wanted to do well. Um, they were just like cool people that, you know, I, I like genuinely in, uh, enjoyed, you know, hanging around. Okay, um, and you're not comfortable saying any of these names publicly right now, but you'll show me afterwards? Yeah, absolutely. You, I mean, you don't want to give away that you're co-conspirators. I mean, that's going to make you look bad. Yeah, first rule of Fight Club. Okay. Um, do, you, do you think any of these people you told were sort of on your side and that they were happy that Judgment Day was going to happen? Or were they like, hey, bro, uh, I hope that Judgment Day does not happen? What was their take? I, honestly, I think they were relieved. <laughs> like, there was a lot of issues with the guilt. Because if you live in a world full of sin, and sin is all around you, and you're forced to live in sin, there must be a time where you know that judgment day is coming and you offer your body up to God and say, God, please save me in whatever way you deem necessary. Old, um, you know, with the, with the cheating, people weren't happy about that. You know, the favoritism, how, you know, some people got special treatment. Like, how can, how can this person do this but it's not okay for the rest of the community um yeah. the loot was super corrupt yeah. um basically like y you know it was i guess it might have been mixed feelings for them like at the end of the day like they understood why it was done like they i think i believe that they well, understood that's the thing it. right it's the old testament like let's be honest god is a dick he's a much bigger asshole than satan is but you have to understand that it's part of his plan needed to be done like i'll give you an example a hunter got badge of the swarm guard he got uh, he got the choker from aq40 and badge of the swarm guard like the loot was was like completely fucked like i'll just leave it at that okay so you would say i, I, I don't think that's a big deal like badge of the swarm guard who cares the game's so easy you're gonna kill every boss in 20 seconds anyway the reason why Judgment sure. Day was necessary is because of uh, corruption yeah, within okay. the hardcore elite community and also selective enforcement of the hardcore rules. Is that pretty much why Judgment Day was necessary for in your in your mind? Absolutely. It was yeah. ruining the spirit of vanilla. There it is.
It's not. It's not real hardcore. It is now. Okay. Um, switching like, topic here for a minute. I'm so, okay. I'll, I'll let you go ahead if you have something. Like else these to say. players would not survive on a real hardcore server. Uh oh. So this is like, again. That's this is like so he's saying like natural selection. When did he first get the idea to do in Judgment Day? Was it the full year? Let me ask you this. Um, I've seen some screenshots floating around of Team Muggsy giving you some information regarding this event happening. Yeah. To what degree is Team Muggsy involved in this? So Team Muggsy was saying a lot of things like playing flashbang sounds, and uh, he got mad I didn't give him credit. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the timestamp, he was messaging me five minutes before poll. Like he just wanted his 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so so you're you're saying T Muggsy was sort of like so he was so people were saying that T Muggsy was the um the actual mastermind, but no, he wasn't the mastermind. Tiny Violin was the actual mastermind, and T Muggsy was just trying to coat tail onto there, latching on to 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 Judgment Day after it had already been planned. Oh, absolutely. Like he, um, someone obviously told him it was about to yeah. happen. And so while the raid leader was explaining the fight, he was messaging me on Discord. So like, uh -huh. he, he, like the stuff he was saying, like the flashbang and stuff, like uh, the, the outcome would have been the same regardless. With he says, I think they will trip out when my mob is in the middle of Lamal, but whatever, this is the best strat. If you have threat, it will look very normal. They will be very focused on Thane. So count, taunt, so taunt, count to five, move to Thane. Do I stand on Thane? Just be near the stack. Man, they're going to be so choked. This is going to be amazing. Whether he messaged me or not. Okay, I just want to double back for one moment real fast. I'm stepping away from Team Muggsy. Mm -hmm. So you said you've been playing in Hardcore Elite for how long? Six months or so? Yeah, yeah, over six months. Okay, and so when part you of year. first entered the Hardcore Elite um, community, was this, was Judgment Day your intention, or did you just feel like it needed to happen after things you had experienced after already being in the community? Oh, no, God, no. Like, when I first joined, like, I'm just a vanilla WoW enjoyer. Um, so he was a good boy, a honest, just God-fearing, American Christian world buff dispeller that had no bad intentions. But when he saw the evil and the sin in the soul of this community, he knew that there had to be divine retribution. All it takes is one bad buff. Like I said, it's my favorite expansion. I love WoW. Um, it's just all these things started to happen. And I just, like I said, I just started to real, realize, like, it just, it wasn't real hardcore. Like, That's I made right. friends, and I still plan on playing with some of these people in, in yeah. you know, the next iteration, whether it's Psalm 2 or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, official hardcore. But um, I just started realizing that this wasn't really hardcore. Like, these, these achievements and accomplishments were, were meaningless. <clears throat> now, let me ask you this. I've seen rumors swirling around that you were actually um, financially incentivized to carry out and execute Judgment Day. People are pointing to you receiving a bunch of, I don't know, maybe like 300 gifted subs or so after Judgment Day had been executed. Were you? Well, I don't think that he was paid off for it. I just think people were happy that it happened. I don't think he was paid off. No way. Sorry, it was an ant that got on my, my monitor. I had to cut him in half with the scissors. But he, we got him. It's good. Paid off by someone to do this. No, I, I did this because they were ruining the spirit of hardcore and vanilla. Like, what they were doing was not right. I, like, like, I even told people not to give me subs because it was never about the money. Like, I've... I've been streaming for years. I'm not a nobody. I'm a small to medium sized Twitch streamer. And uh, I'll give you an example of someone like Crix. For someone like Crix to say I'm a nobody is false. 
It's never been about getting popular. I actually used to like tr Cricks, and I watched his streams, but the guy is going around all over social media. Yeah. I see him on Reddit, on YouTube videos, every Twitch chat that talks about me. I don't know what I did to him. Maybe he voted for Joe Biden or something, and I offended him. <laughs> but he's going around saying I had no followers before. He's saying I was a nobody. In reality, I already had a decent following. I was a small to medium streamer. Usually Let's had a see. Apparently, he was on a spider web. I didn't even know this, but I had a spider in my, uh, on my, he's been living in my monitor. He's dead now. I mean, he, uh, the thing is, like, he streamed kind of regularly, and he streamed apparently more in April 2021. And I feel like, yeah. I mean, 20 viewers, that's pretty good. And you can see, look, look look at the titles. Death equals Petri. Death equals Petri. Death equals Petri. Nax GDKP diaper run. Let's read some of these more, uh, some more of these titles here. Do we have any other titles? So you can see how he began to get disillusioned. You see how this is? And it was somewhere, like, maybe it wasn't six months. Because he put death equals delete. But then something happened where it was death equals Petri. Around 100 viewers during my HC streams. So it's disrespectful for someone to say, you know, oh, he's a nobody streamer. Don't and, you know, it would actually demotivate a lot of small streamers to hear something like that. Tiny Violin, who are you supporting in the upcoming 2024 U.S. presidential election? Oh, well, I mean, I'm not a U.S. citizen. I'm from Canada, so... Uh, <laughs> oh, you're Canadian, okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't think um, a Canadian would be capable of this, actually. That's actually surprising. I wouldn't have expected that. Let me ask you this. So you're saying you were not paid any real life money to carry out the attack. So the idea is anyone that subbed or gifted subs to you as a result of this judgment day execution, these are just people that are uh, in, in favor of this having happened. Yeah. Well, so like these players are going back into Nax after dying in battlegrounds. Like, what do you think about that? Let me put it this way. I am happy we're getting official hardcore servers. Am I the only person who like, doesn't really think it matters that much? Like, I've always said before that, like, I think that, like, getting griefed and losing your character is, like, kind of cringe. It's, like, not really supposed to happen. So, like, if they go in and they do a battleground or something like that, like, why do battlegrounds count in the, in the first place, right? It's just weird. I, I don't know. I, I, just, I think it's just like the... I, I think that people's rule system with Hardcore Classic is like very distorted. On which uh, there will be no appeals or resurrections. You should be able to do BGs. Yeah, I, I think you should be able to. You know, here's actually a great follow-up question. Do you... What are your plans for the upcoming official Hardcore servers? Do you plan on future judgment days on the official hardcore servers mm -hmm. no I, I so i actually like absolutely not i plan on leading the horde uh i have an entire army that will follow me there um like right now i'm i'm currently managing two nax raids on white main era uh we started doing nax with people in literally in green gear a month ago um like we're doing an hour 20 minute nax and we started from nothing, and we'll be doing sub sixty minute runs soon. Like we're the best, we're the best and fastest guild on era. And like it took other guilds two years to get where we are now. Like we're gonna we're gonna roll horde, and you know we're gonna crush it over there. What would you say to the thousands, perhaps even millions of people that are tuning in right now, that are condemning your actions, thinking that you should be banned for what is allegedly griefing in their mind? What would you say to those people? Okay. Well, it's not it's not griefing. Like that's the thing. Like what I did was not griefing. It's it, like I said mentioned, it's just it's judgment day. Like it's a very good point. Yeah, how could it be griefing if it's judgment day? You see? Do you see kind of what you see the argument there? 
Because how could it be if it's something? How could be? How could it be one thing if it's something else? It honestly, it had to be done, and yeah, anyone that experienced, like anyone yeah, that experienced, like what was actually going on, would understand. Like people from the outside, right, right. So it's like wasn't even grief. Like honestly, like if anybody should get banned for griefing, it's the rest of the people in the guild, because they're the ones that were not really playing hardcore. They were the ones that were filing appeals and stuff. So like, if anybody should get banned, it should be them. He's the only person that shouldn't get banned. Um. They just like, they just hear one side of the story. They just, you know, hear I'm a griefer and, and, and yeah. they believe it, but it's just not true. It's not griefing. Okay, so it's not griefing, but if it was, they deserved it. Is that what, is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just judgment day. Like Alex Sensual was right. And all these guys were cheaters. Like there were a bunch of phonies and you know, it's, I, I, you know, so, someone had to do it. Somebody had to do it. And so really it's not, it was like, it was a force of nature. It needed to happen. Somebody was going to do it. Somebody needed to do it. So is it really his fault for doing it when it was going to happen anyway? Do you think judgment day having happened? Yeah. Empowers other grief not other because you're not a griefer. Do you think it empowers <laughs> future griefers? I mean, there's always going to be griefers out there. I mean, there's you know probably going to be copycats that you know, it, regardless yeah. whether this happened, there's there's always people out there that are sick in the head and you know are, are going to try to ruin people's fun. But in the long run, yeah. like guilds have learned their lesson like they can't cheat or there will be consequences so you know short term Nerdist. you know it, it, it maybe it had some negative impact but long term i'm i really do believe it will save the community so he basically like they died for everybody else to live to see like and and so what he's saying is that if your guild in hardcore is doing things that are unethical wrong sinful or immoral it is your not your option but your responsibility to ruin the raid it, it, it's like that is what because it's not even really you doing it it's just that it's happening Okay, and so I think we might have already kind of touched on this a little bit, but coming he off on the official hardcore service, the rest do you think humanity, that this sort yes. of dungeon or raid griefing will continue to be a problem? I don't think so. Like, like who... Like, people like to talk about, like, a long con or whatever, but, like, who is going to invest that much time to play with people this long, like, with the, the intent to grief them? Like... Most of the time, I don't think that's what happens. I think what happens is that somebody gets passed over. Like, this is what happened with me one time. Is I uh, I did a GDKP raid, and uh, the raid didn't go the way I wanted it to. So what I did is I tried to get paid twice from the guild, uh, from the raid leader, and he wouldn't pay me twice. Because I, you know how you get in line, and, and like then they would trade you? Well, I got in line again. And so he didn't give me the money two times. And so then I went into trade chat and I started spamming that he was a scammer and they wouldn't give me any money. Eventually he paid me the second time. Uh, just and, and why did I do this? Because the raid took too long. It pissed me off. We should have killed more bosses. We didn't. The guy was an idiot. Fuck him. Because fuck him. That's why. That's right. So th whenever I joined the raid... I planned on just doing the GDKP and everything going well. But because of what happened, my priorities changed. Yes, in the eyes of the law, yes, I have committed a great crime. But in the eyes of God, I am amongst him. Yep. I, I just don't see it personally. Like I, I mean, there's there's some sick people out there. I don't know, but um, 
I, I, I think, you know, I think it'll be fine on official servers. And just to be clear, that that's not what you did. You did not engage in a long con. This was not your... But this is what I'm saying, though. It's like the long con idea. That's the point. Is that, you know, I wouldn't really do this to a guild. But if I didn't get Ash Condi? And that, like, a hunter got it instead? At that point? It might be a different situation. Plan from day one, you were just a man that had been pushed yeah, too far like and Ash's broke. Yeah, like yeah. It, it's, yeah, like I said, it was just, uh, you know, it was it was a fake hardcore. It, it, it wasn't real. The, the achievements were nothing. Like, yeah. you, you know, the, the first guild to kill kt deserves to do it on an official server that you know is a regulated server you can't cheat the rules um have you heard i don't I actually don't know if this is true have you heard this idea that this uh raid that you wiped the other day sorry that judgment day wiped the other day they're just going to continue and go and try to kill kt what are your thoughts on that oh i th i think it's it's ridiculous corrupt complexity corrupt admins Save your tiny violin, brought justice, cry baby hardcore players, judgment day, based Chad violin. I think that that's what they should have done. Like, they, they definitely should have. They should have said, listen, because it was how they reacted. Like, if this was me and it had happened to me, I would have just said, like, well, this is a grief. We're not going to count this one. It's not a real death. Let's just do it again tomorrow after we get buffs again. And I would have just blown up. Like, all right, guys, see you tomorrow. And that's it. So, like, the fact that they took it so seriously, I think, is what really made the community hate them. How's that a grief? It was a grief. Guys, it was a fucking grief. He obviously was. That's what he was doing. This is my perspective is that the spirit of a hardcore game is that you can only die to things that are your fault. And I, I, I would, uh, if, if I knew, if I thought somebody got griefed, I would, I would not hold the death against them. I would not. That's, that's, where, I, that's where I stand on the topic. Now, we're never going to get appeals in hardcore uh, official, so it doesn't really matter. But that's where I would stand. If I think somebody got griefed and they died to a person with malicious intent, then I wouldn't count the death against them. Because if I did, then I would be being used as a tool to exact somebody else's retribution, which is not necessarily what I would want to be. So that's why I would do that. However, it doesn't really matter what I want to do. Because at the end of the day, this is this like Blizzard is going to do it the way they want to do it. They don't give a fuck. So that's it. Yeah, they don't care. Oh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing this stuff happening in official hardcore. This is going to be awesome. This is way more... Like, I mean, what? W what's more entertaining? Watching them kill a boss or watching them die on a boss? I don't know. Why do you watch NASCAR? Like, these... These players went into battlegrounds. The, the same people that said, uh, we're never going to do raid appeals. Um, now all of a sudden they're doing raid appeals. Uh, it just it just shows they don't care about the spirit of vanilla. Like, Yeah, I, again, I disagree with this Like on a fundamental level. I think that dying in a battleground isn't the same as dying out in the open world or in a raid. Like, I, I don't think that they're the same thing. It's a completely different function of the game. But sure. It's like saying logging out is dying because your character disappears. Like, it just it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, like, first of all, you're a appealing a death, um, mm -hmm. a, a raid death that, you know, they claim is griefing, and then they step into battlegrounds and they die 20 times in, you know, battlegrounds? Like, yeah. like how, how can these players, like, sleep at night knowing that, yeah, They've exactly. Died. How can they even sleep at night doing this? It's fun for viewers like you, but for the players dying from griefers, it's not fun. They want to die how it's intended, by mistakes. Well, they did make a mistake. They made a mistake by playing a game that's managed by a company that has a hands-off policy on everything. You made a mistake by playing a Blizzard game and expecting it to be anything less than a joke. 
Anything more than a joke, excuse me. Like, just by, by going on and playing that realm at all, y you are a fucking idiot. 20 times in a battleground. Um, what, what are your thoughts on the current Petri Flask meta? Oh, uh, uh oh. Uh oh. He's not going to like this one. I, I honestly, like, I, I think it's kind of like. So I don't mind Petri Flask. I actually don't. I don't think Petri Flask are problematic at all. I, I don't mind them at all. I think they're fine. Thing that I don't like is you can leave the group and get magically teleported um, yeah, I think they're to fun. your, your <laughs> Hearthstone location. So um, I understand it's in the game. I'm not a big yeah. fan of it, but I mean I understand if it's in the if it's if it's like an intended Blizzard mechanic. Like I understand that it's totally fine to use it. Like I have no like I honestly have no problem with like Bubble Hearth or, or anything. Like yeah. if it's if you can do it in the game, like. Yeah, it's fine for people to use it. Okay, and so presumably you chose Four Horsemen specifically because of the way that Petri Flask interacts with the stacking debuffs, right? Was that part of your judgment here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. The, uh, the, the, the chain beam is, is GG's. Uh, it was all calculated. Of course it was. Okay, um, and one, once again, so what, what are your personal plans for the upcoming hardcore service? Uh, like I said, I'm I'm gonna lead the horde. I'm gonna bring my army over there, and uh, you know it, it's gonna be a little bit. It's gonna be challenging, obviously, on horde side, but uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna have fun, and we're gonna we're gonna try to you know clear as much content as we can. Yeah, I mean, so he's just really trying to have fun in in hardcore WoW. He's not trying to have fun in appeal core WoW. Quickly, um, con considering you died during Judgment Day as well, have you deleted your hardcore character on Classic Era? Yeah. Yes, I have. It's over. There it is. Because I saw a screenshot. Because remember what happened with Jesus? Is that Jesus also had to die to cleanse the sins of mankind? And then he left this world. You could say his character was deleted. Do you remember that? Not where Calamity had invited you to actually <laughs> continue on in Naxxramas with them. Uh, I think she was just memeing. Um, but um, yeah, like that <laughs> character is deleted. Um, uh, to be honest, I, I might transfer the character to White Main. Like, it, it doesn't matter. It's it's to walk that, in the that whole server heaven. to me is just like a fake hardcore server yeah. at this point. Um, let me, let me ask you this: Considering that you have sort of a known, um, well, let me ask you first another question. I'm seeing clips of you where you're purging world buffs. You're multi boxing nine or ten. How many accounts do you multi box? Uh, I had. Uh... I think I would stream about 16 accounts at the same time. Um, Jesus. They were, like, it wasn't using software. Um, like, it wasn't using, like, input software when I was multi-boxing it. Okay, so would you consider that to be griefing? No, no, no it's, uh, it's, it, like, it's literally an intended mechanic. Like, it's world PvP. Like, there's zero griefing with, uh, it's an intended Blizzard mechanic, so absolutely not. I, I would say it's clearly not, because Kevin Jordan said that it was not intentional for some world buffs to be magic and other ones not to be. Uh, there, there was no real intent. It was, it was completely unintended. But Blizzard, the thing is, though, Blizzard could have changed it. They, all they needed to do is go into the files and remove the magic modifier on that world buff. Did they do that? The answer is no. They didn't even try. And since they didn't change it, it became a... Yes, Blizzard intended 
on making the game easily griefable. This was this was their design. Blizzard wanted Judgment Day. You pushed no changes. I pushed no changes as a foundation. You're com you're completely right. But I don't think that it should have stayed no changes. Does that make sense? I, I think the game should have released with no changes and then adapted after that. Yeah, is that hard for you to understand? Maybe it is. But yeah. They wouldn't do that because it takes away from the true classic experience. Did people... I don't think people purged world buffs back in Vanilla WoW, did they? I don't think so. I I don't even think that like world buffs were hardly even a thing unless like... I, I didn't even know about world buffs hardly in Vanilla WoW. Yeah, that wasn't happening. Okay. Um, is there something that you would consider to be griefing? What What is an example of griefing? Appealing a hardcore character death. Um, give me a second. I guess, like, okay, I'll give you, I guess the example I can think of is, like, if you're stealing gold in a GDKP, like, that's griefing. Like, maybe you're, like, the master looter and you run away with, like, 200,000 gold. That's, that's griefing. Yeah, sure. No, I think it's fair. I think, I think it's also maybe you could just say, like, this is not your take, but it would have been fair to say, I, I don't think anything is griefing, right? That's a fair opinion. I, I know people that have that opinion also. Um, yeah. All right. <laughs> I, I've, I'm being I'm being asked to quickly ask you uh, what is your affiliation with the guild Frontier, which is and for those in the chat that don't know, Frontier is a guild that is racing for hardcore world first, uh, every everything I think on the upcoming hardcore servers. I heard that you were in Frontier, but now you're not. So what what is your relationship to them? My opinion with griefing, what is griefing? It's doing anything that is intentionally trying to disrupt the gameplay experience of another person against their consent, uh, in a way that's not intended by the game. That, that's just generally what I think griefing is. Uh, like, I'll be honest, they booted me, and I mean, I don't, I don't blame them. Like, um, my original plan for Hardcore was to roll an alliance and push for, like, world-first clears, but... Um, Paladins are better. Yeah, Makes like sense. I said, I got booted, and I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I would never expect them to uh, bring me to a raid after that. Yeah. Okay, so you so you were kicked from Frontier as a result of the Four Horsemen. And you remember what happened with Jesus again. Is that originally people welcomed Jesus on Good Friday. Uh, they welcomed him, or sorry, Ash Wednesday. Uh, they welcomed him with open arms. They loved him. They thought he was amazing. They thought he was great. And then after he had to hold on to his ideals and his integrity and uphold the values that he was sent by God to represent, the people hated him. Judgment Day situation. Yeah, exactly. Oh, shit! Hmm. But you said you've got a Horde army, and so those, those people on the Horde are presumably totally willing to continue playing with you. Oh, absolutely, yeah. <sighs> the Horde sticks like together. Yeah, like I like I said, I mean, I've 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 been playing, um, you know, from private servers, classic WoW, SOM. Um, so I mean, I've I've always had a pretty big following. Um, I'm you know GM of a guild. I, I have a bunch of you know loyal soldiers that you know they want to play the next fresh with me. So let me ask you this: um, even though you might not consider the sort of account multi-boxing dispelling situation <laughs> as technically griefing, I think a lot of people would. Not yet. Um, <laughs> so, as an extension of that, people are sort of asking this question, scratching their heads: Why would hardcore elite invite you to their guild and have them have you tank bosses for them, given that sort of gameplay history? Do you think that's a fair question, or could you maybe shed insight on that? Well, like I, I was a good tank. Like I was, I was actively helping the guild. Um, like I, I, I do believe that we only got that far because uh, I was helping them. Like not only in the actual raids, but like outside the raids as well. Like with the with the log reviews, you know, um, you know, teaching players how, you know, teaching them their rotation, you know, de how important raid debuffs are. So, 
Uh, I mean, I was an asset to the raid, in, you know, inside and inside the raids and outside. So one point you made initially is that this, you're saying this raid was sort of in shambles prior to you <laughs> stepping in, that their debuffs were sloppy, their buffs were sloppy, everything, their, their spread sheeting was terrible. Is that, is that, is that your take? Well, yeah. So, for example, like when I first started playing with them, there was never fairy fire on the boss. Like the druids did not understand like how important that armor debuff is. Like that's one of like if you have twenty melee in the raid, like that's a very important debuff. Um, the warlocks are like letting like curse of elements fall off for like long yeah. periods of time. Like they just oh, no one was tracking that stuff. No one was tracking fire, fairy fire. Um, they refused to How use they not improved do exposed that? armor, and it just didn't make sense to me. Like I'm telling them, like guys, we need improved exposed armor. Like, why are we not running this? Like, we have six rogues in the raid, and it was just you know I had to I had to fight with them. Is is some cope excuse about threat? It's like you play alliance, you have salvation. Like we we need these important raid debuffs. The faster the boss dies, the less risk there is for you know someone dying in the raid. You you need to burn not the bosses yet. down asap. So. Someone might even be able to make the argument, if they're to believe the story, that the only reason the Hardcore Elite made it to Four Horsemen at all was because of your guidance and oversight. Yes. Yes, it's, again, he's, he's raising the cows up. You've got to feed them. You've got to bring them out on the range. Let them eat the grass. Spend the time out in the sun. Grow up. Get big. And then you take him to the slaughterhouse. That's just how it is. Yeah, one one hundred percent. Like, I I don't think they would have gone that far without me. Like, mm -hmm. they they wouldn't even have had you know fairy fire up on any yep. of the bosses in Nax. And you know that's that's when stuff starts to get hard. That's when you know like, you know, typically guilds are you know, farming the older content for like months and months, and you know we didn't have the same gear levels like. Yeah, without my help, like there's no way we would have made it that far. So I guess, I guess if that's the case, one might even say that Hardcore really is lucky to even have a Judgment Day because you're the one that brought them that far. That's true. Yeah, they would have never been in this position to begin with if it wasn't for him. So why could they be mad at something that he gave them whenever they wouldn't have never even had it? Yeah, yeah, uh, one hundred percent. They like, were lucky. Who, who knows how far they would have made it with without me? Like true. Um, I was. I played a very key role as the third tank. Like <coughs> the Lord giveth you know, and the Lord taketh ask, away. Like, why? Why did they put me to start on Zeliac? Well, I was their third tank. They trusted me. Like yep. It's just it's a no brainer to put me on Zeliac. It's just what makes sense. All right. Um, I think I think I've asked you all the questions that I've wanted to ask. Are there any uh, maybe final thoughts to the chat or the people tuning in uh, that you would like to express before we kind of part ways? Yeah, like I just want everyone to know that I'm still playing Scriblio with Calamity. Uh, well, that's that's good to know. Um, <laughs> he didn't even know how to respond. You know, I actually thought of one final question. What would you say? I already asked you what you would say to the people in the chat, the billions of people around the world tuning in right now. What would you say to the 36 hardcore elite raiders that are uh, presumably very upset at you? What would you say to those people? Uh, like, I understand they have, you know, every right to be upset with me. Like, uh, but, you know, I don't think, like, they aren't all upset. Like, some are actually thanking me. Um, but Some are thanking him. Where the fuck are Who's thanking him? Who is doing this? <laughs> um, obviously, some of them are upset with what happened, and um, that, that's their choice. Like, like I said, I can show you the screenshots after. Oh my some of god! These players are, you know, actually, they actually want to play with me in the next fresh. Yeah. Um, this is something I haven't seen. Maybe you you would know this. Have any of these thirty six people come out and publicly defended you? Um, <laughs> fuck, I honestly, um, 
I don't know. I uh, I, I haven't really um, seen much besides the uh, you know calamity Asmongold gold interview. Uh, yeah, oh, that was a good one. Besides that, I I couldn't tell you. No, that's fair. I mean, you could imagine if someone you know in on that raid team was happy with what you said or oh, sorry with what you did. If they were to defend it, maybe they would be socially ostracized, so they might just keep that between the two of you and not publicly speak on it. Um, I, you mentioned Makes the Calamity sense. Asmongold interview. I have not seen that yet. Is there anything uh -oh. that was brought up in that interview that you disagree with, or if you want to add any more uh, notes or commentary to that while we're still here? Uh, no, I, I think... Uh, I mean, it, you know, basically what Calamity said on the interview, I told you, um, she just kind of talked about how... Um, you know, as a big part of the raid for uh, for a year, and how we played Scriblio together. But um, besides that, I mean, I I I don't look at the guy in chat. You ain't gonna press him at all. Stay safe. You okay with this? Let's see what his logs are in my chat. Yep, he's got logs in my chat. Okay. Um, no, he doesn't, like, he just, he's, no, it's just, yeah, he just talks about classic WoW, that's it, no, it's nothing exciting, to agree with, with, with it, just a classic WoW boomer, okay. Um, one final question because the chat is mad that I'm not going hard enough on you. One guy. Over the last three days, have you taken every mirror out of your house because you can't stand to look at yourself anymore? No, not at all. Um, I, I don't, I don't regret what happened. Like I said, it needed to be done. Yeah. So you might have even put up even more mirrors. Uh, yeah. All right, Tiny Violin, I, I really appreciate you talking. I appreciate it. I think this is going to add yeah. some insight and maybe clarify some of some of the details with this event. You, you understand. I don't know if you understand. Uh, this is this is my take, at least. This, over the course of Classic WoW, you have a very small set of sort of like epic gamer moments. You've got the the Serenity Funeral Raid. You've got Leroy Jenkins. You've got, I don't know, there's a, there's, there's a, there's a couple situations like this. You've got the Corrupted Ashbringer being ninja looted by a warlock. That's a good video. <laughs> Uh, I th I think I think this one's up there. This is like a this is like a top ten World of Warcraft moment. I think probably. I think this it's a top ten classic WoW for sure. One of those moments. It's definitely a top ten classic WoW. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Um, but the thing is, is it was never intended to be that. Like at the end of the day, it was just Judgment Day for cheaters. Like, yep. um, I honestly didn't. I never expected. Um, all of this to happen. Like, I, I never expected, you know, Asmongold to be covering it and, you know, everyone to be talking about it. It was amazing how popular it was. Like, that video, I think, now has over a million views. Oh, um, okay, so, so that being the case, if you could go back in time, if you could rewind four days ago, would you change anything or do anything differently? Uh, no, I wouldn't. Smart. Absolutely not. Okay. There it is. I think I think it's that's probably fault. a very powerful yes. final statement. Tiny Violin, I appreciate you talking to us today. He regrets nothing. Yeah, I, I appreciate the interview. And there it is. Judgment Day. It was only a matter of time. It was not about... the characters. It was not about the gear. It was about sending a message. And that's it.